What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today is Monday, and it has been a very, very frustrating day. I'm going to get right into it. Again, it's ain't necessarily like a wrap-up like I was doing, but it'll be similar. Either way, I wanted to do this right before I went to the gym to work off my frustration. So have you guys ever just had one of those days, man, where... It's not necessarily like a bunch of big stuff happening, but it's just a bunch of little things that have you super annoyed to the point where you just you just want to explode sometimes, man. Or, or you just feel so frustrated. You, you just want to got to sit down and kind of collect yourself, right? It's just, it hasn't been one thing. It, it's just so stupid to the point where it's things like I'm using a tape and the tape is ripping wrong or it's, or it's, taping something or like, you know, when I grab it, it sticks to something else. Or I go to pull off a label and instead of pulling off the label, the label rips in half. And, you know, it's just a bunch of stuff, man. Just a bunch of little small things. Then I needed to print labels from Inventory Lab for Amazon. And, and, it's, and it's all messed up, the orientation. So Inventory lab, you got to set up how your labels print it, because it can be weird, right? So when I initially had done it, this was a while ago, and I thought I had saved the video, but I did. It was coming out. I don't got a label on me, but let's just say it's supposed to come off this way, right? Um, horizontally. It would come out vertically, and so it would print out multiple labels. So I had to search and find out how to fix it. Finally, I fixed it. So today... It started happening again for whatever reason. I don't even know. I spent so much time trying to figure it out, man. And it just was so annoying because it's like I got so much to do and I don't want to have to deal with this right now. But um, eventually I fixed it. Something to do with the margins. Then I had to re-rotate the damn, I don't know. I don't know. But it's fixed. Weekend sales-wise was pretty good. Pretty good. I really didn't even take the time to figure out the numbers for everything. Um, because I, I just didn't have time to. But Amazon and Walmart's good. eBay was pretty good for me. So I do got a report on one item that I sold thrifting so far. One wasn't a bad item actually. On eBay, I sold about 22 items, right? And the reason why I go over eBay orders instead of Walmart and Amazon, because Pretty much my Walmart and Amazon orders are everyday stuff that is just, you know, sells over and over again, man. I mean, I, I, I actually, I had, so I got a video coming out on an unboxing. Um, and it is sports, sports boxes from 8 8 lots. And, and, and I just did that video. I wanted to get it up for y'all on Saturday. I had too much going on over the weekend. I didn't get it up. Then I thought I had uploaded two parts of it because I accidentally cut it off. Then the second part I was I was uploading from my phone here, but for whatever reason, never uploaded. I was already at home. So but I pretty much just got a, a bunch of that stuff listed on Walmart. And, and so some of it already sold. Now, eBay. eBay. Let's get back to eBay. What did I sell on eBay? Again, 22 orders, pretty good. Um, I sold some Ethernet cables, right? It's another thing from the electronic box that I had from uh, 8 8 Lodge. That, that box has been doing really good, which makes me even more upset that I never got the first one that I had ordered, man. That makes me so much more upset. I sold... One set of cables, that was only an $11 order. I sold some grow lights, LED grow lights, for $14.99. What they need those grow lights for, huh? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I sold some vitamins for about another $14. Bucks. I sold a ACDC Universal Regulated Switching Power Supply. That sold for $16. I sold a bunch of um, external portable um, two terabyte hard drives. I priced all of those to sell. I sold a couple for $21.95 and I sold a few for about 15. 
they like those cheap China ones, but they still one or two terabytes. So, and I probably could have got more for sure, but I had that lot sitting around for so long. And when I tell you this stuff sold super fast at those prices, they sold super fast. I sold some more items from one of my Dollar Tree lots. Can't get y'all that info yet, but I do think that I'm going to show y'all eventually because I'm starting to run out of, um, they're starting to run out of them and they're probably not going to replenish them. But when I'm absolutely certain again that I can't get them, I'll let y'all know what it was. I sold some UF, UHF barrel connectors, female to female for CB ham radio for $13.40. Sold some more makeup and facial care products, you know, nine, ten dollar items, hard drives. Sold some clippers. I sold two separate two separate set of wall clippers. So one was not used even though it was open. That one I took an offer on. So I sold that for $30 plus shipping. Shipping was um, $12.95. And I'll tell y'all what I did with the shipping when I'm how I'm charging it in a second. So I sold that one for $30. I took an offer on that one. And then the other one is used. I sold that as used because it did have hair in it. Wasn't a lot of hair, but you can tell it had been used. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. But that one, I want to say I took an offer for 15. I had it listed for more. Where is it? Oh, okay. So yeah, I took an offer for 15. I had it listed for 20. $20. Well, I had it listed for $25.95 plus shipping. I ran a sale. The sale brought it down to 20 $20.76. Somebody sent me an offer for 15. Initially, I wasn't going to accept it and I was going to counter, but I'm just like, they're used. I'm not about, I, I, I guess I could have countered. I, I really don't want to haggle. They're used. Somebody wants them. If they was new, I, I definitely would have countered, but I'm not, I'm not about to haggle about some used clippers, man. So these clippers, and I made sure I put it in the listing. So I, in the listing itself, I put the clippers came on a pallet. It was used at least once. One of the guards had hair, um, and I cleaned and sanitized it, put it in a separate plastic bag so that they can know which one it is. They want to re-sanitize it. Then I put, um, also took the clippers apart and cleaned the hair out and sanitized them. You can re-sanitize them. So there was some hair in a, in a larger clipper set, and there was hair in one guard. So you can tell whoever used it used it probably once because it wasn't a lot of hair, and they used it with the guard. And I, and I did. I cleaned the guard. I sanitized it. Took the clippers apart. Blew it out. Used a um, little spray air thing. Wiped them down. Sanitized those. And that's how I listed it. So they bought. Um, everything else is just my usual, you know, health and beauty stuff. But um, so to the, to the shipping thing. I have a few shipping policies that I created. So like for those clippers, those are part of my two pound shipping policy, right? Let me see. So I created a few different policies and all I do is I go in to pirate ship and I use a zip code from California and I put it in and I don't use like I know I know this can vary, okay, but I just use like some average dimensions that I might send items with. And then I'll just put two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound. I'll see what the price is. And that generally is going to be that price that I'm gonna pay power ship, probably plus a little bit more, is going to be my shipping flat rate. That will cover now that might not cover hawaii or whatever but i really don't get that many from hawaii and puerto rico honestly with ground advantage hasn't been that bad as of right now i have a two pound three pound five pound 17 pound 11 pound four pound of course i don't know if i said four and and and, and 11 pound and 17 pound I really don't need all the numbers in between because that 17 pound flat rate, I want to say I made that 30 bucks. So that will cover 
that whole range kind of from 14 to 17 that 30 dollars right um because anything under that that 30 dollars and that's a little bit more than it would cost me to send a 17 pound item from here to cali with ground advantage so anything under that i'll just kind of keep that one near but i mean it's been working you still got to kind of set your price so that your price of the item with shipping is matching the market um for some reason i had accidentally i initially had that 17 pound uh policy at 85 dollars so i had to change that i'm glad i caught that because those items would have probably set forever but that's kind of how i'm doing you know my heavier items that won't fit in a flat rate uh mailer so if it doesn't fit in a flat rate mailer charging shipping on all of it my five it seemed like my five percent um promoted is just it's been doing just fine it's, it's a little bit harder to tell this week because i had all of those electronic items which is more of what uh i've been looking at lately even online i've been looking at a lot of pallets from amazon amazon actually sells pallets through b-stock they've been doing that for a while and i've been looking through some i bid it on a few i lost the bids but I, I I really didn't care that I lost them because I got enough stuff going on right now. If I wanted to, I could have been a little more aggressive to win the lots. But there was one electronics lot, man. It was all these like Netgear and Nighthawk and the lot. Oh, the the pilot ended up selling for only about twenty six hundred. But trust me when I tell you, it was worth way 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 more than that. Um. And then there's these like industrial pallets on there, business and industrial, and I was just looking at some of the items and then cross-reference them. There was one I just lost today, which I really didn't care. I was just figuring if I can steal one, I'm gonna steal it. You know, sometimes I'll bid and I'll be like, cause every once in the blue, I'll steal one, right? Somebody, I'll bid low and nobody will really outbid me. So I'm like, oh, I came up, right? But um, it only ended up selling for $2,675 and the retail value is 22,000. And when I was looking through this, it was 701 units. When I was looking through this, especially as some of the top items now some of these other items i ain't too sure about but that 2600 that's a drop in the bucket you're gonna make that times like five or more uh just looking at it there was 21 bids on that on that auction actually so that's kind of going to be my approach going forward as far as ebay a lot of that stuff and then who knows if it's in good enough condition I'll probably be able to put it up on Walmart or back on Amazon. It just depends if it's in brand new condition or not. But, um, you know, I was just kind of testing out because I never really paid much attention to the Amazon stuff. The only thing, they got some weird requirements and some weird things in there uh, that you need to read. But we'll see how it go. When I finally do get aggressive and really want to take one of the auctions, Guys will definitely be the first to know. Uh, but having said that, I really need to just calm down, man, because it's getting kind of to the point. And you know, like when you get super annoyed in your mind and, and you're kind of frustrated, you just want to throw something or break something, then you start making more mistakes and it just kind of compounds. <laughs> it kind of compounds. And things can go downhill really, really fast. And that's kind of why I just say, you know what, I'm going to stop. I'm going to eat something. I'm going to make this video, you know, talk to my peoples real quick, go work out, and let it all wash away. <laughs> let it all wash away, man. So, let me show y'all the item that I had bought and sold from the Goodwill. All right, so this item I found at the Goodwill, and I actually sold it on Walmart. Right now, it's listed... For 42.21, that's not what I sold it for. And the seller is a pro seller fulfilling it by Walmart, so I had to undercut him. Now, here's the item itself that I put on my little spread sheet. So I bought it for 4.99 at the Goodwill on the 18th. No, I listed it on the 18th, right? Ain't that the listed line? Yeah. So I bought it for $4.99, listed it on the 18th. It sold two days later on the 20th for $33.77. And um, shipping was $6.91. 
But with Walmart fees, shipping and all of that, my profit was $16.80. So not a bad profit, man. Not a bad profit on a $4.99 item, huh? And it only took two days to sell. Now you might wonder why why I sold it for so much less than what the what the buy box is now, but that's because for for one, it was a pro seller, and I don't have my pro seller badge, and for two, it's fulfilled by Walmart. So with those two things, I would never get the buy box as long as they have it. I, you, Walmart's not Amazon where they may rotate, even if you price the same as a, a prime um, seller. Trust me, man, your stuff will be sitting there. So what I have found is that if you want to overtake the buy box by somebody fulfilling by Walmart, you generally have to underprice them by almost 20%. Sometimes 15, 15 to 20. If it's Walmart, you're going to have to go 20. And sometimes they still won't let you jump them unless you go more. Sometimes they still won't let you jump them. But most of the time, it's about 20%. You can jump any fulfilled by Walmart buy box. So I, that's what I did. I have a little thing. I'll show y'all this one. So this is just a simple spreadsheet that I use. And this right here, let me see. This is my 20% box and that's my 10% box. Um, and so if I was trying to undercut them, let's see, what was that price again? 42.21. So I put 42.21 in there and it shows me what the price at, 33.77. And that's how I know, you know, with the price. Very simple spreadsheet I made up. I'm like, I ain't going to keep trying to do this on a calculator or whatever, right? So I just put it in there and then I just undercut it. <laughs> but yeah, sold in two days, man. And um, I have found some really, really good uh, ladies fragrances. Victoria's Secret, Bath and Body Works. But both of them was kind of missing some. So I just gave them to my girl, man. I ain't. Smell real good too, and they probably would have sold. But I know, I know, I see people selling fragrances sometimes that's missing some, but really wasn't worth it. I mean, I'd have probably made like three, four bucks after shipping. So at that point, I'm just like, I'll just give it to her, her and my stepdaughter. They kind of like jump all over that. You know, it is what it is. So that's the first item. I do got watchers on some of my other items that I thrifted, and that could be for any reason. All right, they, they could be, you know, researching or who knows. If they think I'm going to send a offer, that is probably not going to happen yet. I just listed them. So probably not going to happen yet. So I have been seeing a lot lately of people, you know, just still talking about their struggles with sales this month so far on eBay. One thing I was thinking about when it comes to eBay, I really believe that there's a, a price point, and this is all things considered as far as like the desirability of an item. But there's a price point that I think, let's just say for lack of a better expression, wakes up the algorithm. And it's hard to know for any item, but I've had items that I know are desirable and that are priced at market. Is, is everybody else's, right? They have sat and sat and sat while others have sold. And I can go in and look at what the person put in their titles and in the souls. And if there's any item specifics I was missing and everything can be all the same and my item won't sell. But if I just put it at a certain price and honestly, for me, it seems like the price and, and I'm not the first person to say this, but I'm telling you, man, from that $10 to $20 range. Even when you got items that are worth more, for some reason sometimes, eBay, it just seems like it doesn't get any traction, man. It's, even when you up the promote it for some reason. I lowered the promote it on a lot of these, put the price down, and now I'm not talking about down where like I'm giving away my item either. It's just something that in my mind, I'm like, all right, it just seemed like when I go to this price range, things sell. Even for some of my, you know, I guess you could say higher ever sell price items. And I don't know, man, but I, I, with the with the electronics and, and all the things like that, and I don't, I'm not saying for anybody who don't sell electronics. I just think I was looking at something, right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I was, I was on Bard. Get thank John for that. Flipping ain't easy. I was on 
was on there. And so I asked her some questions. Let me see if I can get back there real quick and bring that conversation back up. All right, and I, I do still got the conversation. So listen, it is just something that kind of stimulated some thoughts, right? So I asked Barb, because I'm trying to think of this algorithm thing. And this is all just conjecture and fanciful thinking. But I asked, I said, do you have any understanding of how the algorithms work on sites like eBay and Amazon? So it says, while I don't have access to the exact algorithms used, which of course they wouldn't, right? Um, pr proprietary stuff, but anyway, but used by eBay and Amazon, I can provide you with a general understanding of how they work based on publicly available information and industry insights. So it says, common goals, relevance, both platforms prioritize listings that closely match the user's search query, ensuring they find what they're looking for, customer satisfaction, they, fact, they favor listings with positive reviews, high seller ratings, and good customer service history, and then sales performance, products with strong sales history, fast shipping, and competitive pricing off the ring higher. Now, that's nothing new. We all, we all know that, right? But it says key algorithm differences. eBay. Cassini algorithm prioritizes best match based on a combination of factors. Significant factors, keyword relevance and title, description and item specifics. Seller performance metrics, that's feedback and defect rate, competitive pricing and shipping options, listing quality, clear photos, detailed description, and past sales history. Okay, so there's five things there. Keyword relevance, seller performance metrics, competitive pricing and shipping, listing quality, past sales history. It says uh, Amazon A9 algorithm focused on maximizing sales and conversions. Significant factors, winning the buy box. Crucial for visibility and sales determined by factors like price, fulfillment method, and seller performance. Product title optimization, uh, product reviews and ratings, inventory availability, sales velocity, fulfillment methods, and pricing competitiveness. It says additional considerations. Constant updates, okay, both, both algorithms are constantly updated, and black box nature, the exact factors, and okay, yeah, right. But look, the reason I bring this up is this, because now I know a lot of us sometimes think that eBay is trying to be Amazon and all of that, which I don't necessarily think that eBay is trying to be Amazon. You can disagree. I think there are things about Amazon's platform that eBay likes and wants to try to implement, but I don't think they want to, I think they realize they're not going to be Amazon. Um, but that's just like any business, right? You see what the other guy's doing and maybe there's a way you can implement it into your business and see if it works. And the main thing that, that, that I was thinking about was this, right? So it says Cassini prioritizes things like best match, keyword relevance, seller performance, competitive pricing, right? But one of the significant factor, factors about Amazon was uh, focused on maximizing sales and conversions, where eBay, where, where eBay has said Cassini was focused on best match. Um, sales velocity was one for Amazon. So here's what I was thinking. Here's what I was thinking, all right? Because we're talking about eBay, how best match search has been really funky lately, which is the same way with Amazon. But the one thing that, I, that came to mind is this. If you have an algorithm that initially is based on organic search and best match, right? Keyword relevance and all of that. But then you introduce another aspect of it with the promoted listings and pay-per-click. Well, that has to change, right? And that, this is where I think they want to take apart from Amazon, where it says Amazon focuses on maximizing sales and conversion and, and pretty much things with a higher sell through rate, higher velocity. Yeah, title structure matters and things like that. But those are not the prior, the, let's just say the, um, the main components, right? eBay is switching it to be similar to that, in my opinion, to where... It's no longer really about 
best match based on keyword search. If if hey look, I, I'm just I'm just I'm just talking out loud, y'all. I could be totally wrong. I'm just saying I don't think it's any longer based on best match um, in, in in reference to keyword search. I think best match in, in, in relative to the sell through rate of an item, the velocity that an item sells, and uh, and, and conversion rate, conversion rate, and, and so those aspects. Of Amazon's A9 algorithm, I think that eBay wants to try to implement. Well, you think about it like this: Amazon's been doing um, ads and things, right, on a platform. eBay's new to this. Walmart does it. Walmart does ads. You can buy ad space on Walmart. eBay wants to introduce the same thing. Well, eBay has been introducing the same thing, but you you got to think that when it started with promoted listings back when it was just one percent. They, they probably didn't just sit around and, and that was the only step of the plan. I would think that when you sit in a corporate environment and you come up with, with things like this, you don't just have a step one. You got a step one, two, three, four, and five. And now sometimes, yeah, you start something, you say, oh man, that worked well. Well, let's do this. But I think that they already knew they was going to go from 1% to 2%. They already knew they was going to go to... Um, dynamic ads, right? They already knew they was going to go to pay-per-click. They already knew it, but you have to have a, a, um, what you call it? I can't think of it, but you got to kind of like do this in steps. They can't introduce everything at once. It has to be phased in. So you might have a phase one, two, three, and four. But when you're doing this, when it comes to the algorithm, the priority of the algorithm is no longer best match according to a keyword search. And how you know that? Because whereas you would put certain keywords in and those specific items would be brought up, now that's not the case. And you can do a search, and it might depend on certain categories and things like that, but for the most part, you could do the search and you can see what comes up to the top. The sponsored listings, right? The sponsored listings come up first. So what that means is the algorithm has changed um, to prioritize other aspects of things, right? So it doesn't even necessarily have to be the exact item. It could be a similar item that converts higher than yours. If it converts higher than yours or has a higher sell-through rate, but might not necessarily be the exact item the buyer is searching for, that item may come up above yours because the algorithm has changed what it's prioritizing in search. Well, they changed it. I ain't gonna say it changed, right? But it, they changed it. And if they're using AI, who, who even knows how that's going, right? Because there's so many factors that can go into that. If you're trying to measure buyer behavior and you know, you're know you trying to match not only the type of item that the buyer is looking for, but things that might be relevant uh, in, 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 um, relevant to what the buyer has purchased in the past. So anything can come up. The, the buyer right now could be looking for shoes, but maybe they search for socks or whatever before, but that's not what they're searching for now. But because they have, now socks are coming up. I mean, there's just so many ways you can go with this. But my whole point in this is that there's no, I don't think that, I think that, first of all, complaining about, you know, algorithms and searches and things, it's kind of a waste of energy, but trying to understand what may be happening may help us when it comes to selling our products on eBay. And so if we know that the priority is no longer necessarily best match according to keyword only, which is what it was, but also things like pro, uh, conversion rate and velocity and sell through are being prioritized over others, right? Which is what we have heard. Um, if that's the case, then your item may take a back seat to others. So what does that mean? That means that, yeah, it may sell, but if your sales are slow, one of the reasons just may be that eBay is just not putting, you know, the, the emphasis that it used to on the keywords that it used to put on. It's, it's also emphasizing the sell-through rate. And if that sell-through rate is lower, if that conversion rate is lower, um, just won't move, man. Because the fact of the matter is, things that that historically have had a higher sell-through are still selling. And still, for all of y'all who have 
been having a hard time. It's just January. And guys, don't don't get too, you know, don't get too worried. It's just January. We still got February, March, April. People will be getting their taxes. And, you know, things will probably get better. But for me, for me, I've even noticed, okay, in the health and beauty area on eBay. Items that used to sell a lot for me, and now now mind you, my store is way smaller than it used to be. When I was just focusing mostly on eBay, I was almost up to 3,000 items. So I know this probably has something to do with it. However, the same types of items that used to sell more frequently don't necessarily sell as fast as they used to. A lot of factors can go into that. However, it's hard to believe that that's just it when I put other types of items in and they sell faster. Or, or you got the value thing where I can take three, four, five of those items, put them together and price them really low and they still move fast. So it's not that nobody's not looking for them. It's the value of the item itself. So for instance, let's say I got one of these little ink crowns, right? And let's say I got it listed for, I don't know, seven, eight ninety nine. dollars Now, on, on platforms like Walmart and Amazon, this will sell super fast. In fact, where's my phone? Walmart need to really get an app. All right, so on Amazon right now, this item has a sales rank of 282. Okay, <laughs> yeah, 282. That's how fast it's selling. And it's selling, if you are doing Prime, you can get about, well, Amazon's priced at $8.99, and the next Prime after that is $7.99. There's a couple um, seller for fields, and the lowest one is $7.94. So with a sales rank of 282 at 794, seeing how my cost into this type of stuff is usually about a dollar twenty-eight cent or so, usually not over 150-ish. I would sell those all day long on, on uh, Amazon, and that's where they would go. I used to be able to put something like that on eBay one at a time, and they would sell not as fast as Amazon, nowhere near as fast, but they would sell frequently enough. Now, if I was to put that on eBay at the same price as Amazon, I can guarantee you. If, let's just say I had two of them. Of course, the one on Amazon, priced at $7.94, Merchant Fulfill, probably take me a couple of days or so, if that, to sell, right? Just because you still got Amazon on the listing and you got one more Prime. That's uh, just that's the only two Primes on there. Um, it may take a little bit longer. But that would probably sit on eBay for just one, priced at $7.95, no best offer. Probably sit for weeks and weeks, if not months, man. This is what I've been noticing. Now, if I was to take three of these, price them at eight, nine ninety five for three, they probably sell fairly quickly. So the value, um, so it ain't that those things don't sell or people ain't looking for them. For some reason, they're not getting as much traction. This is one of the reasons why I sell stuff like that mostly now on Walmart and Amazon because it's worth it. If I had two hundred of these. And sent these in, and I and let's say my dollar my um my cost is a dollar thirty cent. I send these in to Amazon at a at a sell at a sales rank of two eighty two. That's gonna be going so fast, and this is so easy to prep because you know why? All you do is you get the label, pop it on there. You ain't even gotta put these in a poly bag or nothing. You ain't gotta put none of this type of stuff in a poly bag if you don't want to. Cover the label, throw them in the box, and that's it. Um, this is another reason why. That's where I'm leaning more towards this year anyway. But for M for eBay, I have to do other things. I have to do other things, and I can't wait to do it. So I got a bunch of stuff that I got that are going to be lifted. I'll be doing more lots, but the lots that I put up there as far as makeup and stuff on eBay, it's going to be priced really low because it's just going to be stuff I want to get rid of because if I'm not sending it to Walmart or Amazon or selling it on Walmart or Amazon, I don't want it to sit on eBay. I just want to get rid of it. But then I'm going to be moving into these other areas. 
I got these little sports lots. I got uh, the electronic stuff. I got, I'm going to be looking at some of these other Amazon pallets, especially that business and industrial stuff. Those were items that were selling one, two, three, four, five hundred dollars on eBay. Now, may take a little bit longer, but I'd rather have things like that sit than something like, you know, a piece of makeup that's going to sell for seven or eight bucks. That just used to make sense. Now I really don't. But in order for that to work for me on eBay, I'll have to have a very large store. And I'm not I'm not trying to focus on that right now. So in, in no time in the future, actually. But um, continue to see how my thrifting stuff does. I'll keep tracking it the way I've been tracking it on that sheet. And I'll let y'all know. But hey, man, $16 in two days. That ain't bad. That was the only item, though, that I was that was in new enough condition for me to list on the platform like Walmart and Amazon. Other items are used. Again, I got watchers, but we'll see what happens. But that's it for today's video. Do me a favor. Hit that like button, man. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see y'all Wednesday at uh, 6 o'clock on the live.